Can our heroes recover the sunstone and solve the mystery? Or will they be stuck up a tree? This month on d d Minus. You have barely caught your breath when the warded branches in front of the doorway of the room shrink back onto themselves and the door bursts open. Murloc Gnomes enters and says, I heard the struggle outside. Assumed you were giving him the once over, but based on your physical appearance, the fact that the dragonborn is inflated like a balloon and the young man is naked and reduced in size, I now see you used your group powers of seduction. Well done. Yeah, you really pushed your way into here <laughs> with a naked guy and me blown up. You're just smushed <laughs> against all of us. Mm. You chose to uh. do that. Yes, I am a master detective. Did you get anything out of him with your group orgy? I mean, we we got some shit out of him, I don't think. I'm going to take a <laughs> handkerchief and pick up that stone. All right. As you go to pick up the stone. Not with my fingers, with a handkerchief. Okay. As you go to pick up the stone, <laughs> Murloc notices it. And as you pick it up, he says, My God, a moonstone. If he hadn't been so distracted by all of you having sex with him while small slash inflated, this could have turned him into a werewolf. It's a damn good thing none of you noticed it. I, me, the little stupid maid, had no idea. And I'm just going to take it and put it in my pocket. Oh, all cool. Right. Are we acting? Can we act? Okay. She, he knows who she is. Are we going to play parts? I'm, I'm in. Either way, you all took far too long having that sex conversation with that young naked man, and it's time for supper. I'll see that he's given medical attention. You're expected at the king's table, clocksucker. And I must say, this will serve as an excellent opportunity for you to gather the information from your family that they might not have been eager to share with the rest of the court. All right. Oh, so it's like private dinner. Yes. Okay. Are we also going to that dinner? Yeah, you're all invited, yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Because it would be otherwise pretty boring just yeah. listening to me. <laughs> or oh, probably for the best, considering my track record. Yeah. <laughs> everyone comes, who knows what rabbit hole that goes down. Clark Sucker, you stay the fuck in here. <laughs> <laughs> you tie a string around Dave's foot and are led to a small but lavish <laughs> <laughs> antechamber where the king... His bodyguard. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on a second. Because when he goes through the doors, I have to know, does he just, are we able to just bounce him under the, the door jam or do we have to, does he get caught on the sides and we have to kind of just oh, tug him? I, if I am holding that string, he's going to hit every single <laughs> yeah. out. Oh, oh, tug it down. <laughs> mm -hmm. <Angle> it. <laughs> yeah. And there's, there's definitely a squeezing a birthday balloon through the door situation yeah, okay. <laughs> on the way in. Can he talk as a balloon? Yes. Yeah. No, he's totally... <laughs> He's just inflated like a balloon. Okay. Yeah. So there, the king, his bodyguard, and Claw's sister await you. Can you talk deflated like not a balloon? <laughs> I was thinking more Dig like it. how can you take in and out air as like a closed surface thing? How do I breathe? Are you asking how I breathe? Yeah, if you're a balloon, you have to like oh, stay in. It's, it's magic. Oh, this is He's magic. magic. We're, magic. we're yeah, playing D&D. In, Morgan? In, so, in some ways, this may not be scientifically sound. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to catch it so that Heath couldn't talk, but it's fine. No. <laughs> oh, I see. oh, yeah. nice. oh okay. damn it. All right. Well, damn it. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> of all the times to use podcast time travel. <laughs> <laughs> so there at the table, which has been magically grown out of the branches that make up the floor, there are berries, seeds, fine, fresh vegetables, and raw meat that's been piled high. As you enter, the king says, My God, bro, you look terrible. What happened to them, Murloc? And Murloc, who comes in behind you, says, They were all having sex with the werewolf for information. No, that's not what we were doing. Uh, it's not what you were doing. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Uh, but whatever finds the stone, I guess. Uh, have you had any luck, bro? Well, kind of. <laughs> I mean, we found a stone. Well, who... Might have some trouble with the with the werewolf. Um, 
Nobody here. He was just Somebody a... sent him muffins. Who was it? Hmm. Let me see. Uh, Papa? And his like personal bodyguard comes in and he uh, sort of lumbers towards his seat. And he whispers in his seat. He nods and heads off to a back room, which you assume leads to the kitchens. He says, uh, why do you ask about the muffins? Well, they have this in them. And I hold up the, the moonstone. Oh, a moonstone. Very dangerous. Uh, the work of our thief, I should imagine. My, my servants tell me you spoke to the tabaxi. I mean, obviously, I'm biased, but I suspect her greatly. Uh, did anything in the conversation with her indicate she might have something against the werewolf, Rob? Nothing. Mm. I sure do remember that conversation well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember talking about a, about a werewolf at all, even remotely. I have a quick question that's sort of like out of universe. Sure. Were we told why the everyone was in like different rooms? Was there like a party? Right. So everybody was at the palace to begin with for the Festival of the Sun. The festival. That's right. Which that's is supposed right. okay. to happen in two days, right? The day after tomorrow. That is where the king uses the sunstone to sort of reinvigorate all the plants that make up Arakok. And these were all emissaries visiting for the festival. And then once the stone went missing, they went like on lockdown. Exactly. Why might I ask, was there a werewolf who could not see the sun at the sun festival? Oh, well, actually, the unfortunate young man was here uh, consulting the Flying Library. It's uh, the greatest in the plane. And if I do say so myself, Rob, the greatest library in any of the planes. And of course, once the stone was stolen, he had to be secured and couldn't be let go. I see. Hmm. Well, have you discovered anything else? Any suspects? Any signs of the stone? You're all suspects. Sorry, I've always wanted to say that. I just yeah, I feel like we're more suspect than anybody else, honestly. I don't think you should probably say that out loud. Tight, <laughs> tight. Definitely <laughs> indicate to me that you're a suspect. <laughs> I could cast Zone of Truth and we could get this done with. Uh, you certainly could. Uh, if you feel like every... All right, I'm casting Zone of Truth. All right. Yeah, that's my last second level spell slot. All right. 15 foot radius sphere centered on the point of your choice. So I guess I'm going to try to get as many people in this room as possible. Is it going to be possible to get everybody? Yeah, I feel like you could you could get the... Everybody needs to do a charisma saving throw. Cool. On a failed save, a creature can't speak a deliberate lie mm -hmm. while in the radius. Sure. Okay, before we do this, can we all agree that we're not going to like grill each other on stuff that's not related to this? Just ask like questions that I agree to no such thing. We won't. I, I definitely agree. Intentionally probe things. <laughs> you know what? I rolled a two, so I also agree. <laughs> I agree. Seven. Okay. Claw has failed. Snedrick has failed. Dave has failed. Excellent. <laughs> Bridget, do you have to roll it? Or no, does, I don't. It doesn't affect you. Okay. It'd be weird if it did. It would be weird. <laughs> I shall roll for the king and for Nitin and for, and I'll roll for Murlock Holmes. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. What do you get? Like just always truthful answers on fails? Yeah. Read that spell description. All right. You create a magical zone that guards against deception. On a failed save, a creature cannot speak a deliberate lie while in the radius. You know whether each creature succeeds or fails on its saving throw. Oh, interesting. I guess it's not super useful if you don't. So Eli did the king and Nittens. And yeah, did they? Did oh, they succeed? Yeah, the king failed. Uh-huh. Uh, Murloc Holmes succeeded. Okay. Not getting the truth out of that, <laughs> that one. <laughs> And Nitten, what is, is it 13 or 14? What's your spell? It's 14. Then she also failed. So Nitten and the king okay. can only tell the truth. Do you know who sent the muffins to the werewolf? Rock? No. No. Rock. We should have waited until that dude came back. I, I'm just, just to keep up appearances, I'm going to, I'm going to look at Murloc Holmes. Can only Anna ask questions? No. No, nobody no, can it says tell nothing a about it. Nobody lie. can, nobody can tell a lie. So anybody can ask questions. Anybody can ask questions, right? Anybody can ask questions. They can not speak if they want to, but... You could say a lie with a question mark at the end, even. Father, do you love me? Well, of course I love you. You're my <laughs> son, Ra. 
Do you know where I've been for the last? How long have I been gone? Woof. Four years. <laughs> Hi. Uh, what? You haven't been gone for four years. You've been gone for like a year. Does anybody know how the Sunstone <laughs> got stolen or anything about the Sunstone being stolen? Do you have any guilty knowledge about the mystery of the Sunstone? Where is mom? Where is my mother? Uh, well, first of I all, I feel like you're. You're moving this in the wrong direction, Claw. I get it. I get Are you it. Proud about his podcasting and musical theater. Oh, this isn't concentration. Hey, guys, this isn't concentration. One second, I'm going to command him to shut up. One second. <laughs> well, Claw, that's that's ridiculous. I I've had Papa looking for you for the last year, night and day. He's put up all posters. Right. He's inquired. I've spent all my magic slots. I'm spending <laughs> command, Claw. You need to make a, a wisdom saving throw. Okay. 20. Fuck it, oh, yeah. No. Oh, yeah. Good father son talk going on right here. <laughs> okay. Do you have any guilty knowledge? Do you do you have any knowledge of how this happened? No. Nittens? No. <laughs> Did you hire someone to do it? What? Well, that would that would count as guilty knowledge, Rob. <laughs> That's Come true. On. All right. Uh fuck. The pen is blue. Sorry. <sighs> Couldn't help it. No, I love that movie. We have Liar Liar in this universe. <laughs> Fantasy Liar Liar. Fantasy Liar Liar. Fantasy Jim Carrey was never anti-vax. It's great. Zone of Truth is actually what it's called in, yeah. this, in this universe. <laughs> zone of Truth, Zone of Truth. Gosh, any, can anybody think of any other good questions? Well, as you are sort of networking that, the door bursts open and a guard steps in and says, Your Highness, there's been, Rock, a terrible accident. You, the king, Nitten, and everyone else are rushed from the room to the quarters of none other than Reese Waffles, the tabaxi emissary. A bomb has gone off, centering Ooh. from her desk of rovers. There is very little left of Miss Waffles to speak of, or pretty much anything else in the room. Murlock Holmes, who comes in last, picks up a piece of one of the rovers that survived the explosion and says to you all, Looks like curiosity killed the cat. Hey, everybody, just jumping in a little bit early here. Uh, it's a longer episode, but I stopped here so you can appreciate my Rover's joke. It's really why the commercial is early in this episode, because I was super proud of that joke and just wanted to pause so we can all enjoy how good it was. Obviously, if you listen month to month, it might not be super relevant, but for the people who were binging, that was great. I nailed it. All right, to business. If you're enjoying the show, why not support us over on patreon.com forward slash D and D minus all spelled out and get access to our extra episode, which we recorded of uh, lasers and feelings as well as behind the scenes, dungeon masters corners. I think I've done three or four of those now. And you can also help contribute to the show. Our Dungeon Master level patrons created all of the NPCs that are in this arc, and you'll hear them credited throughout the episode. And you could be doing that if you were a Dungeon Master level patron. So again, if you want to support the show, head on over to patreon.com forward slash DND minus. If you want to support the show, but you don't have any money, that's okay. That's okay. Why not go on one of those review websites like iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts and write us a nice five-star review so that people find out about the show. Tell people about the show. You play D&D, you got friends that play D&D, tell them about the show. It's, it's a little hard to convince other people to listen, but I think once they get into it, they're going to love it. All right. We will see you next month. Thanks for listening. Bye. Um, so do you think it was her now? Well, uh, I suppose not, Rock. Yeah, so can you think of anybody else who might have had it in for the werewolf? Or for this one? It seems that maybe you had something to do with it, with her. Oh, you think I murdered one of the guests inside my palace with a bomb? He doesn't have any guilty knowledge. No, but you seem to have some pretty ill feelings toward her. Look, uh, we've got a lot to clear up here. What? Why don't you all head to bed for the night, and you can interview some new suspects in the morning. Make him, make him tell us his worst secrets, his top five worst secrets. We're not in the room anymore. <laughs> Let's go back into the room. It's also not compelled. I feel like a long rest is exactly what the doctor calls. I for. need exactly that. I would agree. <laughs> I feel like he's avoiding the secret thing. All right. <laughs> I've used 
all of my spell slots. <laughs> I have one hit point. <laughs> you are led to your chambers to recover from your wounds. Who's going to puncture the fucking warlock? Uh, don't worry. You he, don't have he, to puncture me. He deflates because the sun rises. Carl comes back into the summonable realm and Dave deflates and loudly flumps onto the bed in his room. You can all give yourselves a long rest. Thank God. Claw, you can heal yourself up and restore your spell slots. And of course, there is now just one more day until the Festival of the Sun. Also, Noah, because it is the sunrise, roll your premonitions for me. Oh, yeah. Portents. Portents, yes. 12 and 8. All right. Everyone rested up? Yep. The next morning, you have breakfast by yourselves. And when you finish, you're fetched once again by Murloc, who informs you that you have more suspects to interview today. Our next suspect is a sensitive subject, especially to the royal family. Plyborn, lovingly known as Papa about the palace, was present when the king was attacked and claims to have been rendered unconscious himself, a scenario that I, Master Detective, find a little hard to believe given his size and profession. Sure, he's no spring chicken, if you'll pardon the pun, my prince, but he's one of the few remaining paladins of the crown, and they're supposed to be undefeatable. One wonders just how he managed to be overcome so easily. That said, tread carefully with your questions. He has guarded his highness since he took the throne, and the royal family are very fond of him, considering him more a family member than a servant. It would not be wise to insult him. Ooh. Well, you know, Klaus just going to call him a dickhead when we walk in. Now. Why yeah. are you asking us to do it then? Because we've clearly done so well. Well, I'm a master detective. I'm here to help you. But since you're the crown prince and his band of friends, you actually offered to help locate the stone yesterday mm -hmm. when you arrived. I, you know what? I should I should have asked him another question this last night. <laughs> Never mind. Call Baxi's on the helping. You could cast that again. Nope, we're good. We, go we could just get all of the, why don't we just get all the living, I mean, because we're down one suspect, It's we, we need a small room. We just crowd them all into a small room. We have a five by five one handy, mm -hmm. and we then, and we just do the so sort of truth, truth thing again. Well, that one's covered in cat shit. That's <laughs> well, okay. All right, that's fine, too. Ooh, oh, yeah. Oh. Hmm. And the other one's covered in cat guts. That's not a bad idea. That said, you should probably meet these suspects first. Would you like to begin? All right. I don't want to derail the prepared material. No, that's sure. fine. Yeah. Well, maybe we should. <laughs> no, yeah. Get, get fucking wild. Interview everyone at once, half of whom you haven't met. That's <laughs> great fucking narrative right there. People will love that shit. And then Steve right. says, who's Steve? Go fuck yourself. And then we can fight them all at once, too. That's I'm right. sure yeah, that we'll win. Royal Rumble. You just yeah. invite everyone to the throne room for a fight slash <laughs> truth contest. We need like a bomb too. If we had a bomb and a zone of truth. Okay, group. Are we together with this one? Claw, are you going to be running off on your own trying to interview them by yourself? I mean, we all know the answer to that question. The answer is yes. <sighs> we can divide. We can get no. more done. Not not with screen time. That's, that's that's not how that works. There is only one of me. <laughs> Eli's good. He could do it. Turn into your left earphone if you'd like to hear the conversation <laughs> with Claw. Turn into your right earphone. All right. Pan everything. You are ushered by Murloc over to Papa's living quarters. They are a spare antechamber off the royal bedroom. Other than a simple cot, his armor and his sword, which hang gleaming on the wall, the room is completely bare. When you enter, you find him deep in meditation. But when you arrive, he stands to meet you. When you come in, shakes your hand with surprising gentleness. He is six foot three, a human, and completely bald with long white eyebrows and warm open eyes. Hey, are you invincible? I heard you were invincible. Oh. <laughs> I love an opening question like that one. Well, I'll tell you what, there's only one way to find out, and he leans down like with a punch me in the face gesture. I punch him in the face. I, I'm gonna headbutt him. <laughs> oh, you no. headbutt him, and he he wheels back and he's like, "Oh no, oh, you attacked me unprovoked. Why would you do that?" Oh God. no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding with you. I'm just messing. With you. Yeah, I'm pretty. I'm pretty uh, invulnerable. Yeah, awesome. That's got to be pretty cool. I sure hope you don't turn into some kind of monster. We have to fight. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what. 
Yep, that's a whole thought. I agree because I also have this accent. <laughs> well, what can I help you with, Prince Claw? It's good to see you again. Question. Do you know uh, anything about the Sunstone? Was there anything interesting that you saw? Anything suspicious? Oh, yes. I like this one. Right to business. Well, I was sitting by the king as he took his evening restitution. That's that's the nice way of saying your dad likes to nap by the fire. I'm sorry, when you say nap by the fire, do you mean take a shit or is that just napping by the fire? No, they, that is where the metaphor ends. He actually naps okay, by the right, fire. Okay, all right, all right. I understand. So I just, just got to clear it up, time, time. There's a knock at the door and then everything went black. I can't remember anything else. I woke up fine and so did the king. And needless to say, as a invulnerable paladin of the crown, I'm pretty ashamed about the whole thing. I bet. Hey, you know, shit happens. I'll tell you what. You know, it's not really supposed to, though, when you're an invulnerable paladin of the crown, right? Yeah. Yeah, right. I get that. One of the last five remaining sworn to protect those high kings. It's just like a whole thing. Y'all get, get a lot of in and out, right, with the big library here and everything. You got a lot of people that come and go. Oh, yeah, for sure. Anything unusual in the last couple of days leading up to the Sunstone going missing? Uh, leading up to the Sunstone going missing. Mm, I mean, Nitin and Murloc announced their uh, engagement. What? I, I guess that caused a little bit of a flutter. I see. Interesting. Murloc. Is he? Is Murloc is in the room here? with us? Murloc's not in the room. He's outside. Oh, oh. Okay. They did act very cutesy with each other yesterday. Oh yeah, they're uh. Awful fond of each other. It's it's best not to watch. How long have they known each other? Well, I suppose uh, it's been four or five months now. I mean, y'all know the story of Murloc and how he ended up in the kingdom, right? Oh, of course. But why don't you remind us of it? <laughs> no, I, I thought that he was hired to do this. Is it because he was already here? No, Murloc was already here, y'all. So y'all know about Illithids or... Mind flayers. They don't like that term. It's not a slur, but like they don't like it, right? <laughs> I feel like that makes it a slur if they don't Ooh, like it. But mm -hmm. it's not fighting. Well, you know what? Let's leave that behind. I don't feel like I don't feel like this character gets <laughs> more likable the more he defends slurs, especially with the accent I've given him. Mm. You've said the term a couple times now already. Look, he's a Mickey flea, and the point is. <laughs> the point is, you know, though they're bad. They're bad, bad news. And he originally came to this plane to try to conquer it. And he was up in a tree. Well, down in a tree. Whatever you want to call the, our relationship to space and air. It gets a little confusing if you think about it. And he took a tumble, hit his head a couple hundreds of times, woke up thinking he was a detective of some kind. Now, I was just as suspicious as most folks for a long, long time. But then, well, he saved my life. How'd that happen? Mm -hmm. Well, I took terrible ill just after he had entered the kingdom and got worse and worse. Of course, Murloc had approached the kingdom to say that he was a consulting detective and nobody bought it. We shooed him on his way and told everyone in town to keep their eyes on him because mind flares are up to no good. But as my illness got worse, he offered to help and... You mind just using M word instead of mind flare? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> no, he was... Uh, an illithid. We'll use the proper term. We'll use the proper term. He's illithid. And he cured me. I was wasting away something awful, but he, he cured me. Now I'm right as rain. Do you know what it was that was, that was troubling you, that was, that was making you ill? Well, Murloc says that I was under some form of psychic attack. Mm. But, you know, illithids are uh, very powerful psychic wizards. So he fended off the psychic attack and I felt Good as grass since then. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So if you had to, like, if you had to, like, take your guess, who do you think of all the people that had access to it had the most reason to steal the sunstone? Mm, well, gotta be honest, I don't rightly know. I mean, anyone who lives here would probably not be a good suspect because if by tomorrow we don't conduct the Festival of the Sun, this entire city will collapse into the bottomless void of air beneath us, which even for the ones who fly will be quite troubling. As far as the visitors go, honestly, I would have guessed the tabaxi until she got turned into, you know, kitty litter last night. 
it's interesting how everybody was she particularly suspicious what was she acting certainly suspicious because everybody seems to be pointing their fingers that way what's your slur word for tabaxi oh we call them teeter beaters <laughs> yeah i thought that's i thought so oh, God. Well, the tabaxi in the Aracocra, I mean, it, it's not just a cats and birds thing. They've never gotten along as a people. You know, they're both transient when it comes to the prime material plane as opposed to the plane of air. And yeah, they're both mistrusted by folks down in the, I guess you'd call it the real world. And how'd you come to work for them? Well, I'm a paladin of the crown. Way back in days gone by, an ancient god of justice gave 12 paladins a special blessing to be able to defend the 12 kingdoms, both on Earth and in the different planes. My father and his father and his father's 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 father have all been paladins of the crown. We carry uh, certain blessings and magics that come with the gig, and we protect the sire, if you will, of the kingdom. So could another one of them paladins knock you out? Are y'all tied or is there a, could, could there, there can only be one kind of a situation? There's only about five of us left. Uh, I reckon one of them could do me a mighty beating. I mean, any powerful wizard could. I'm not, not actually invulnerable. It's just a part of the brand. Really? You took that headbutt like a champ. No, it hurt a lot. Can I tell oh, you? All right. All right. I got froze in the moment and I was like, you got to do the tough thing. Pound another crimp, but genuinely. Yeah, no, I get it. I the get whole it. thing I did where I was like, oh, you hurt me. That was me letting it out. And then is that how Harry Houdini died? I that think is how, how Harry Houdini died. Fantasy Harry Houdini. <laughs> Here's died. a crazy thing. You ready for this? Pound another crown. No shit. Yep. Pound another crown. No, I should have guessed it now that I think about it. Protecting the Lord of Handcuffs. Oh, shit. Yep. Really fucked up the timeline. Please don't think about that too hard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all have any other questions? Not for this one. Mm -mm. Maybe for Murloc Holmes. Okay, I just want to be clear. So it's pretty obvious that Murloc guy... Oh, right, right. You're also thinking that. Because like now yeah. I want to have ask Murloc about a million questions. Yeah, he was engaged to the person who blew up just now, right? No, no, no. 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 He was engaged Close to the sister. sister. The sister, the the one of the heirs to the throne, though. Oh, is she an heir? Well, I mean, she, 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 don't get any ideas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's she is an heir to the throne. Yes, and she she's younger than me, so if I leave, right. she's an heir to the throne. She he everybody started trusting him because this one fell ill from a mysterious mind sickness that only he could cure. Yeah, no, it's definitely Murloc. Right? Mm -hmm. All right. We're going to go out into the hallway, I think. All right. <laughs> well, he might have other suspects for us, so let's not, let's not. Uh, yeah, I. I'm sorry. Let's not play our hand too quickly here. Let's see. Do we have any spells that could make me look like a mind flayer? <laughs> I think I could. I, I really wish you could use the just M word for that. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, what no, is it? Illithid? Illithid? I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, I think I might have a. No, I don't. I don't have that spell anymore because it was so useless. I never do that. I never used it. So Because we go undercover and maybe ferret out his accomplice or something like that. Let's see what other suspects there are. Mm -hmm. But let's make sure that we keep him in sight. Mm -hmm. He's the only one who managed to beat that zone of truth thing. Aye. You know, like, I, I feel like we can call up Claw's family innocent on this. Well, n maybe not my sister. She's engaged to him. No, she she had she was under the zone of truth and didn't have any guilty knowledge. No, I yeah. she, she did well, not. We, did we ask? Oh yeah, she did say no. Yep, yeah. they mm -hmm. both said yep. no. Yep. All right. Well, before y'all go, I don't know if you remember, but you asked me to figure out who ordered the mini muffins. I mm -hmm. last night. Well, I went and spoke to the kitchen. They have no idea who ordered them. Apparently, they just got a message from the court. Just said like mini muffins to room werewolf, like, and they're kind of used to that. But the weird thing is, I'm the one who delivered them. So I didn't notice a moonstone or anything in them before then. I guess you could speak to the cook and she might know more, but that's all I know. Interesting. Very interesting. So should we go to the cook or the next witness first? I don't know. Let's ask Murloc. We can split up. Hey, let's ask Murloc. <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do that. Why, why would we, though? Just to make it harder. All right. So you exit out, and Murloc is waiting for you outside. Are you ready to see your next suspect? Lead away, Murloc. 
Mm-hmm. All right. For our next suspect, we'll have to head to the stables. Tonk Filchbatter, created by patron Michael R. Thank you, Michael. Is a gnome warlock that hails from the land of Gith. It's not much of a suspect for <laughs> reasons that will become obvious when you meet him, but perhaps his magical insight will be of use to you. Through there. And he points you through the gateway to the stables. You said GIF, right? GIF. G I. Could it be GIF or no? Is it, you sure it's GIF? <laughs> <laughs> this is why we don't like Kara Santa Maria on this podcast. <laughs> Inside the stables, a gray eyed, devilishly handsome gnome with his back to you. How do we know he's gray-eyed if he has a speck? Because you can re- <laughs> it's reflected in the water bucket at his feet. <laughs> Aimed at his face? Yeah. Murloc, before you go, can you order us some mini muffins up here? Um, it's not really my thing, but sure. Okay. I'll, I feel okay. like it's your, I mean, you, yeah. I'll get you some mini muffins and he... Just place the order with the cook and then, and then you can do whatever the hell you want. Okay, cool, 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 cool <laughs> man. <laughs> And he heads off to go fucking get mini muffins for you. What? And a grilled cheese. <laughs> and a grilled cheese. <laughs> you got it. Thank you. You got it, D Dog. What? I, I I feel like Bridget probably wants a beer. I I have my flask. It's always filled with liquor. This is the thing. Oh, That's always I, is the case. But you want a beer, right? But then like you, you don't have beer. I am sorry, Murloc. I'm sorry that they are treating you like a fucking servant. It's fine. <laughs> fine. Greatest detective. In the world. I mean, Claus of uh, Claus the fucking prince. Yeah. I mean, what's the point of being the prince if you can't make No, people... I'm going to. I did, I said yes. It was I'd literally going to go I'm, get I'm, the I'm justifying the derision. I ain't got to justify it to you. <laughs> wow. I actually did that for a reason that's not just shitty, but. I think it's just shitty. Okay. He heads off to the kitchen to get a, a mini muffins and a grilled cheese. Uh, what's this guy's name? Tonk? Tonk Filch Batter. Tonk. Hello, Tonk. That's me, says the horse. Oh. Yep. What? Oh, y'all thought I was old blue eyes here. Nah, man, he's just a stable master. Get out of here, motherfucker. And the stable master <laughs> walks away and goes, I'm Tonk. I'd shake your hand, but, you know, <laughs> I'm hoofing it. Hoofing <laughs> it. I like this one. I reach out to shake his hoof. And he j- sort of gently places his hoof in your hands. What can I do you for, Prince Claw? I'm going to keep my hand like, I'm going to do like the Donald Trump handshake on his hoof. Cool. I'm a horse. This is fine. That's okay. I'm going to try and intimidate him, though. Okay. Make an intimidation check for me. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Here we go. Oh, three. <laughs> That's a three. I'm going to make a perception check. Ooh. Ooh. I forgot we had that. <laughs> nice. So this horse just like Justin Trudeau'd you and like, yeah, threw he like you back. pushed me away with the hoof. <laughs> Absolutely just gently gets <laughs> stepped on by a horse. And he's like, uh, what are you doing, man? I observe the hell out of that. Yeah. <laughs> 18. Of- you notice that Claude tried to intimidate a horse <laughs> through, a, through a handshake and the horse gingerly stepped down on him. <laughs> I show no embarrassment, but I feel it inside. Me. All right. So question, do you know anything about the missing stone? Oh, yeah. Wow, yeah, I guess I wish I could be more help to you. I ain't seen nothing particular, but I'll tell you what I think. Ooh. I don't care what they say about the paladin or the crown or whatever. That dude's been acting sketchy as hell. First, he lets a mind flayer into the palace. Then, he lets someone get the jump on him. He's supposed to be one of the five remaining great bodyguards of the world. I tell you, in the kingdom where I'm from, Gith, he'd be out on his ass. Do you think he's, like, just getting old? I don't know, man. I mean, Prince, can you stand up? I'm just kind of standing on you. I feel like we did a <laughs> handshake. Nope, stand nope, right here. Staying there. All right. Yep. I mean, I don't want to insult you, Prince, or anything, but the kingdom's been a little, shall we say, ramshackle while you're gone. I mean, your dad raises this whole fuss about my son is gone. My son is missing. Sends the paladin out to find you. Puts up posters and Wanted thing. I mean, I'm sure y'all saw him where you're from, right? He sent the paladin. Yeah, to retrieve him, of course. He's the paladin of the crown. Do you think he just, like, went to the bar and didn't try and come find me? I mean, your sister found you fine. I mean, did did you see any wanted posters? Or did anyone tell you that there was a major reward out for you? 
I honestly don't know. I'm going to say no. I definitely would have turned him in if I'd known about the rewards. So. All right. Well, then he didn't do an awful good job then, did he? No, he didn't. Also, didn't she just find me through Blade? Yeah. I mean, your sister found out that you were still alive when Blade reached out and explained that you were trying to gather the seven parts of the wand. He hadn't heard anything about how hard they'd all been looking for you. I'll tell you that. Mm -hmm. Wow. All right. It sounds like you didn't do very a very good job at all. No. No, no one did. The night that it happened, though, do you remember what you were doing that night? Yeah, I was eating hay out here mm. in the stable. Sure. So I'm researching at the Flying Library to try to get to uh, this undone. Thank you for not mentioning it. I appreciate the politeness. It is okay to ask about it. What's going on with that? Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, let me just say this. If y'all ever take on a fairy as a patron, <gasps> be careful which mission she accept. Yeah. I got caught in the tort of Titania. Mm. Oh, no. Yeah. She turned me into a horse. <gasps> oh, no. Yeah. I go back to my patron, Oberon. He thinks it's funny. He's like, oh, that's funny as shit. And so he left me this way. Oberon is your pet. Do you sing to them? Oh, yeah. All the time. My God. Oh, okay. So you know what they're like. I mean, there is no talking to these people without a song and a dance. And a trip through a meadow. And don't get me wrong. Oh, you must be great at skipping through meadows now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But penis size wise, it's all right, though, yeah, right? Yeah, I mean, no. Just, penis size right, is better. Right. So I just, yeah. I can kick a lot more ass this way. I'm taller. Yeah. You know. What were you originally? I was a gnome. You were a gnome. Yeah. So that stable master is like your friend from your previous life? No, no. That's just a random stable master. Not all gnomes know each other. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Bridget. You're welcome. We get a lot of that. So you were just eating hay. When did you find out that the soul stone was missing? Did you just hear it through the grapevine? or? Well, I'm looking out through the windows, right? Whatever these branches, windows are called. All of a sudden, this blue pyramid descends over the entire palace. I think, that's fucking weird. That looks like a wall of force. Sure enough, one of the guards comes in and says, hey, you're going to have to stay here for a little while because someone stole the sunstone. And I was like, oh, great. I got nothing better to do with my time. So, I, of course, I try to call up. Over, you know what? I don't get you into the whole thing. But, yeah, that's what happened. Mm -hmm. What time of day was it? Do you know? Nighttime. Nighttime. Because mm. you were eating hay. Mm -hmm. Can you still get to the library? Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, it's the flying library. It's You guys have checked it out, right? It's pretty, pretty cool. We haven't quite had the time yet. Everybody says it's like the best library in all the planes, though. Is that true? Or is it like kind of like three quarters of the way up? Oh, no. I mean, it's pretty great. I mean, no, no offense to my, uh, you know, the University of Athiana or anything like that. But uh, Cocteroo, she does a pretty great job. You feel free to insult it. I don't give a shit for my alma mater. Oh, you went you went to go at the Anna. It sure did, sure did. Let's sing the fight song at the same time. All right, all right. <laughs> fight, fight, fight. No, no, no. We did it. <laughs> Jolly. All right. I feel like we should have gone with the sweet no at the Anna callback. <laughs> so sweet no Matthew. you enjoy that pun that's do you hilarious. yeah that's it that was like my that? very own pun Anna that I just came up with on my very own that was very good this is how much they listen to podcasts yes listen. exactly <laughs> they're really they're really paying super close attention to this show we all make together I have listened to every episode I'm sorry so maybe check out the title you just hasn't read the titles is all I've been raising your son <laughs> it's fine this one's called the murder most foul part Yep. Three. Oh, mm -hmm. that's right. They are. They do have names. I forget they have names. That's a great pun, Eli. Murder most foul. Thank yeah, it's a, it's a great pun. I doubt it's ever been used before. Yeah. How dare you? Probably not. We love it. Very own. Feel attacked. Do you want to huddle up really quick and just talk to each other for a second or no? Aye, before Murloc gets back. Or before we keep questioning this guy. Yes. So, you know, odds are everybody's going to point us to somebody else, right? Aye. But we kind of, we're kind of feeling like it's Murloc. I mean, is there anything else we can ask this guy? We can ask him if the sunstone, like where he is in turning himself back from a horse, if the sunstone would be useful in that, we should have that some knowledge of that, right? Mm-hmm. So what are your plans for unhorsing? Well, I mean, it was fey magic that turned me into a horse, so pretty much any powerful magical entity could do it. I mean, honestly, if I'm being totally truthful. Do you want to go back? Do I want to not be a horse anymore? Yeah, I would love to walk around on two legs. And I don't know. Did you enjoy being a falcon, Heath? 
Yes. I mean, did you enjoy being a Falcon, Dave? <laughs> I was so fast. <laughs> <laughs> it's true he was and he and he wasn't even a talking falcon so no all right so you need a significantly powerful object or magical being mm-hmm yeah okay would somebody using the sunstone be able to do it or oh yeah i mean i don't know if the sunstone could do it obviously it's not like the king offered it up i i'm not gonna lie i might have asked before i left uh, didn't find much of use in the library there was a lot about like not trusting the Fae and don't get involved with the Fae, which, you know, once you're in their employ and they're sending you like a W-2, that's that's not super helpful. Do you know of any magic user in the kingdom currently? Oh, do you need the magic user and the sunstone or is it just the sunstone? No, I mean, you'd probably need a pretty powerful magic user to use it. Right. So then have you seen a magic user that you think would be able to do it while you've been here or no? I mean, other than me. <laughs> To turn me back into a, a gnome? Yeah. Um, I mean, there's a lot of folks in the kingdom that are powerful. This is the prime material plane. Folks are a lot more um, connected to magic up around here. I mean, Claw, your sister's an awful powerful wizard herself. Oh, cool. Good to know. Look at this barrier. She created this wall of force around the entire palace. This is, I mean, this is supposed to be magically impossible to do, and she did it. Hmm. Okay. Feel like she's still suspicious, even though she's my sister. Yeah. She has no guilty knowledge. Yeah. She has no guilty knowledge, which makes me think that she's under the th a th thrall, if you will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The way those ichthyoids or whatever the hell do. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thank you for your time. You step up into the hall and... Murloc better have those goddamn muffins. Murloc is not back yet. Okay. Do you want to wait or? I feel like we should go to the kitchen. I, I think we should go to the kitchen too. Should I pretend to be Murloc or no? No. They okay. would know him. <laughs> just he checking. just showed up for muffin. Just checking. I think you should pretend to do it anyway. I think I should too, but I will. <laughs> but I'll, no, I'll wait. No, you know what? Keep him guessing. Keep him I'll guessing. Bring, no, I'll bring it home later. <laughs> so you head to the kitchen. As is. Where Murloc is. Mm hmm Waiting for muffins. He says, oh, uh, you finished. Your cross-examination earlier, I see. I'm just waiting on the muffins and a large... And the grilled cheese. And the grilled <laughs> cheese. Don't Didn't forget about it. Felt like you did. And a large hen aracocra that is obviously like the head chef of this comes out. And the minute she sees you, she's like, Muckle up! My goodness, Prince Claw, come here, come here. And she wraps you in her wings and gives you a big old chicken hug. Aw. I have a question. Yeah. So... Are there different? No, not this is for Eli. So are, are we different like yeah. bird races within the Aarakocra race? All different bird species, yeah. So then what am I? You're an eagle, I think we figured out. Okay. Yeah. According to the drawings, you are. <laughs> You're an eagle, yeah. But yeah, I picked that at random though. So I mean, I don't know if that actually has been... An emu. <laughs> canonized. An emu, yeah. Vito. Vito. <laughs> penguin. Ostrich. Penguin. I would, I would pick ostrich. penguin. I mean, you know, he couldn't fly when we met him. I feel like Penguin is the way to go. <laughs> yeah. Or like, what's that uh, Douglas Adams birdie did the documentary on? Uh, Kakapo. Okay. Sure. Nice. What's the one that turns into like a little circle with a face? With the, it's the mating dance. Oh, yeah. Right, right. No, I know the one you're talking about. Yeah, that, that widens out into an oval. You're talking about an angry bird? Oh, he's the bomb bird from Angry Birds. Mm -hmm. Oh! He's an angry bird. Yeah. Hi. Okay, so she hugged me. I hug her back. I kind of lift her up a little bit. I'm like, oh my God, it's been forever. She likes that. She like giggles. <laughs> we have some questions for you, if you don't mind. Who makes the muffins around here? Well, it's me, of course. You made some muffins for the werewolf, didn't you? Did you not recently? I sure did. And mm -hmm. who ordered those? I got a note from the palace. Excellent. And who picked them up? Papa did. He, he does most of the delivery, checks everything, makes sure nothing suspicious goes through. Papa delivered them himself. Papa. Was there anybody else in the kitchen when it happened, or was it just you and Papa? Just me and Papa, and I, th I think a couple of servants. Papa. You think? Is there like a is there like a pen and paper down here that we can use? Oh, uh, sure. And she sort of rustles around. She's got a desk in the corner, which is sort of like made out of straw, very chicken nesty ruffles through and pulls out a pen and paper, a quill and paper, 
and hands it to you. But instead of a feather on the quill, there's just like a fleshy finger on the end. <laughs> 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 That's excellent. What did the note what did the note say that was yesterday that ordered the muffins? What did the note say exactly? Well, I don't remember off the top of my head, but you know, <sighs> one Come on. what, what, Do you what, still have the note? I, I, I can look around and see. And she, she sort of ruffles in the desk and she goes, Yeah, yeah, here it is. Uh, okay, I make sure that Murloc doesn't see it as I as I read it. Okay. It says like mini muffins, broom of werewolf, ASAP. I ask, hey Murloc, can you write on this pen and this paper? With this finger, mini muffins, room of werewolf. Sure. You know, as the uh, world's greatest detective, I know a thing or two about handwriting analysis. I think you'll find, Prince Claw, that mine is very different than what was written there. And he sort of slides it onto the desk in front of you. Pretty sure that's largely pseudoscience, the <laughs> handwriting analysis thing. It is. It is actually pseudoscience. But can I tell you something? Yeah, go ahead. Do not look into how much forensics is pseudoscience because it'll bum you out. Really? It'll give you it'll really, it'll give you a panic attack. Don't look it up. <laughs> okay. It's like the basis of your whole job. Yep. Nope. I'm more of a, like a fun, rough, fun look at your pants legs kind of forensics. Sure. Pants legs. Yeah. What do you usually get from pant pant legs? So I could tell that you're the strong, silent leader, and that she's the fun maid. Yeah. Well, he, this guy's good. This guy's good. <laughs> yeah. I kind of like just wrap up both notes together. And do I have a cloak or anything? Sure. I, sure. Okay. I put it in my cloak. Got it. Where did you go to detective schooling? Where did I go to detective schooling? <laughs> have you not heard my origin story? I come from the mystical land of London. Now, I used to be an illithid, much like my comrades, trying to conquer and destroy everywhere I went to. But then there was an accident, and I struck my head several hundred times. On the way down, my brain was rearranged for me to realize my past life as the world's greatest detective from the magical land I of... past life. Mm. Yep. Okay. From the magical land of London, there's a gingerbread man he appears to me in my dreams and tells me what case I need to solve next. Okay. Well, then. <laughs> That's great. All right. That London thing sounds like bullshit. And you're marrying my sister. Yes. And you have convinced her that you are marriage material. He's a big fan. What can I say? <laughs> the tentacles ain't just for talking, Claw. Can I say that? You can. Man to man. <laughs> say more. Woo. Give me another one. Weird. Gross. Say You're more. receptive to that, Claw. By all means. If I could use this term, you, we played chicken and you won. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and the cook is like, that's offensive. Yeah. So it, does an early bird get the worm is what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, who's next? So how do you do like with cloacas? You know what? Never mind. Never mind. It's too personal. Yeah, never mind again. We'll talk later. All right. <laughs> uh, who's next? Oh. All right. Do you still want these muffins? And the, the chicken pulls like a hot tray of muffins out and a, a grilled cheese with a tomato soup. And she's like, I learned this. Uh, this is a grilled cheese and tomato soup recipe I learned from an innkeeper in cloth. There you go. Mm, that tracks. Hmm. I thought it was a good callback. It was a great callback. Thank you. It must have been recently. So, Murloc, these muffins are going to go to... You, you asked for the you muffins. No, we wanted them for each of the witnesses. You want me to bring muffins to each of the witnesses. So that was the last one. We already interviewed the last guy. So take these muffins to that guy, and then you got to come back down here, and you got to get more muffins, and then we'll go to the next guy. Okay, do you want me to, do you want to wait here while I deliver the muffins and come back and then bake a new batch? No, nah, we'll go to the next guy. We'll, we'll, why don't, we'll just why, wait, 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 go wait, randomly. Why don't we divide up the muffins into two baskets, and then we can <laughs> give them to the people right now? That sounds great. Here, servant. And then he passes half the muffins to a passing servant. You take these to the, the to Tonks, and uh, I'll introduce you all. But technically, I'm the crown prince, and I could make orders, right? So you want me to go. Is that what it is? Is this like a... Yeah. Okay, I'm going. I'm a-going. And so we're going to go to the next witness, right? Do you want me to tell you where they are? Because you have literally I, no information. I, we'll find it. You're just going to feel it out with your heart? Randomly wander around. I mean, it's, until... it's like probably just, just a bunch let, of doors. Let me know their name. Oh, uh, yeah. Their names are what's his name and that's his name. No, just. Cool. Here we go. I'm assuming we just go to like the next door that we went to from last time. We went to the stable last time, Claw. You're in a palace. Now you're in the kitchens. We'd be fine. <laughs> I have faith in us. Cool. 
let's do a <laughs> do a uh, history because I've lived in this palace. Before, yeah, right? do do a history check for me. Oh, three plus four. Yeah, seven. you have no idea where these fuckers are. <laughs> <laughs> Get them. How many rooms in the palace? Hundreds. It's a palace. All right, I'm gonna do a hundred perception checks. <laughs> <laughs> You got to do a memory palace thing. Well, here's the thing. We don't want Murloc coming with us, right? No, we do. Why? We just want to keep, we want to keep an eye on him. I feel like if he's our chief suspect, we don't want him wandering off so much. But we don't want him in the room while we're asking people about him, do we? Well, he hasn't been so far. He's waited outside. Would you like to wait with him next time? No, but that's why I, that's why I threw him off so that we could go no, interview oh, people without him. Legitimately, I literally said, we got to keep him in our sights, Claw, and then immediately after, you send him off for fucking muffins. I don't think we should have him in our sights. I think that we should be interviewing people without him there. Guys, this grilled cheese is really good. It's really, really good. <laughs> hey guys, I'm back. The stables were really close to here. All right, thank God. Come on, where are we going? All right, let's go to the next witness. All right, our next suspects are an odd couple, refugees from the prime material plane of magic. They might be odd, but they're actually good fellows. Don't judge a book by its cover and all that. And as you walk towards, this is like one of the normal guest rooms in the castle, but before you enter, you can actually hear the sound of people arguing inside. Insects? No, Wrigley. How about grass? There's plenty of grass. Mm, too cowy. Too cowy? Yeah, too cowy. You step inside a cheerily lit chamber. A fire crackles in the fireplace. This chamber, by the way, is 10 feet by 11 feet, in case you're wondering. <laughs> That's fucking huge. <laughs> yeah, it's giant. <laughs> and a fire crackles in the fireplace and comfy red leather chairs surround a large desk at its center. However, much to your surprise, and in spite of what you heard as you just were outside the door, you find the room empty. Hello? Hello? You hear from one of the chairs by the fire. The chair turns to you and says, Ah, uh, can we help you? And a book on the bedside table says, Yes, can we help you? Are y'all from a Disney movie? Fantasy Disney. Fantasy we're, Disney movie. I. No, we're mimics. And our version of making ourselves at home is admittedly rather different than yours. Oh. I am what's his name? And this is my brother, that's his name. So, does anybody else want to take the lead questioning? Is Murloc in the room? No, Murloc's outside. Murloc always waits outside while you interview the suspects. So what are you guys uh, doing here in uh, Aarakoc? Well, it is our hope that here in the, you know, plane of air, where things are far more simple, we could find something to eat that's a bit less, um, how did you say this appropriately, uh, sentient. You guys, you, you guys are normally like turning into treasure chests and shit. Okay, Aye. so there's uh, quite a few harmful stereotypes going around about mimic. What you have to understand is that when you're a mimic, pretty much your entire body is your tongue. So our reputation for attacking other creatures comes from the fact that people insist on thrusting their most delicious limbs into what amounts to our mouths on a regular basis. I mean, imagine how you'd feel if everyone you ever met was absolutely delicious looking and kept climbing into your mouth looking for treasure. But no worries. If you just keep your distance from us, you'll be fine. All right, but no, but I mean, you don't have to be a treasure chest. We just, we turn into something for that fits the environment. I, like a chair. You could just be a chair. Nobody's reaching in there looking yeah, for people treasure. Are people sit in chairs. People sit in chairs all the time. <laughs> I ate a servant earlier in the week. I felt so bad about it because I'm sitting here. I'm being a chair. I freeze up because this guy just comes in and he farts so loud. Then he sits on me. What could I do? Nom, nom, nom. Ate him right up. All right. No, that's fair. That's fair. Thank you. So now wait. So what have you been eating since you've been here? Well, we've been trying to figure it out. But what's his name over here is not being super helpful. What about fish? And then the book on the table says, what's the point of giving up adventurers if we're just going to eat sweet and harmless fish? Well, fish aren't really all that sentient, so. Oh, so you're you're trying to figure out how to become vegetarian? Kind of, yeah. In the mimic sense of the word. Okay. So where were you guys the night that the sunstone went missing? Mm, uh, let's see. I think we were in here, weren't we? Yeah, we were definitely in here. Yep. Have you spent any time with the head rooster in the kitchen? 
Uh, no, we, we try to stay to our own room. I mean, don't get me wrong. We're uh, doing our absolute best. But if someone so much as accidentally bumps into us, we get hit with what I'm going to go ahead and say is bloodlust. And that can be very unpleasant for everyone involved. And you've been here, I assume, for the library or? No, no, we're we're actually refugees of sorts. We were in the, uh, I guess, what you would call home dimension, where you all are from. And we, we escaped to the plane of air in the hope that a, a simpler dimension might make it easier for us to uh, find something less personally to eat. Hmm. So you're, you're in search of eating birds? No, I think they're trying to, like, go through this plane. Yeah, the plane of air. So we were hoping that by sort of being in the open air, maybe we could ch- catch things as we fell through. Yeah, I don't think that's how it works. I, so, I don't think that's how it works either. Did you see anything suspicious on the night that the Sunstone went missing? Not here. We were stuck in our rooms. The whole time? The whole time. Stuck, you say? Well, I mean, not technically stuck. We could leave any time we want to. Although, I will say, we did have those lovely safety wards you see behind you on the door installed if we do go into our bloodlust. I see. See. Mm-hmm. Keeps us locked in the room. Uh-huh. It's funny how many of these rooms have that. Have you had to use them at all since you've been here? Yeah, when the uh, guard sat on me the other day, I was uh, in quite the fervor. Mm-hmm. I see. So just for completely unrelated reasons, could you turn into a, let's say, plastic penis? Oh, sure. And he turns into a plastic penis. I am going to do an insight check. I just did. <laughs> <laughs> insight check. I would like to know to see if there's any sort of like if they've been meddled with at all, like their brain, like, I don't know. If they've been, they're under, they're under a magic. Have their minds been flayed? Do they, do they seem like they are flayed or not? Sure. That, I don't know if that's an insight check, but I'll let you roll one. Would that be Arcana maybe? Yeah, that's more of an Arcana check. Is it Arcana? All right, I can do Arcana. I have the shit out of Arcana, don't I? I'm plus six. Yeah, I do too. I would say we all do it. <laughs> all right, do it. Go for it. That, that only comes out to 14 though. I rolled an eight. I'm a plus four and I rolled much worse. Eight. Normal looking mimics. Yeah. All right. All right. I mean, you'd never met a mimic that could talk before. So, so. yeah, right. Like, how can a mimic look normal? Right. Yeah. It would just look like a different. <sighs> I mean, insight is more like motivation, I guess. Yeah. They seem pretty straightforward. Okay. If you want to roll an insight check, I, you know, I can try and give you. I will. That's a nat 20. Hey, okay. With a nat 20, I will give you, you can see that they are strained these mimics. Like, they're doing their best not to eat people, but mimics are kind of intended to eat, you know, living creatures, and so Aye. as long as they've gone, like, they're they're hungry, and the longer you're there, you can sort of sense it's harder and harder for them not to attack you. All right, I think we're going to leave. Okay, I think so. But as we're leaving, I'm going to stop, and I'm going to Columbo, and I'm going to go, one more thing. Ooh. Yes? In your search to find something other than sentient beings to eat, have you tried muffins? Muffins? Well, that's strange because we actually got sent a basket of mini muffins early this morning. And the plastic penis sort of hops across the room <laughs> towards a basket that's <laughs> oh waiting on the desk. <laughs> And sort of it, it reaches the head of the penis inside and mm-hmm. flips a muffin out and then opens yeah. up the pee hole and chomps a muffin. <laughs> That's but then so detailed. <laughs> but then a red vial falls out of the muffin tin and smashes on the ground. Oh no. Splattering the penis, splattering the book. And uh, everybody, make a make a quick perception check for me. Oh, boy. Now, technically, does he have to stay in penis form the entire battle? Twelve. Two. I feel like he should have to stay. Yeah. A little bit splatters on you, and you recognize that substance as blood. Oh, boy. And before you can leave the room, the rune in front of the door glows red. Mm-hmm. And what's-his-name says to you, 
Have I mentioned how delicious you're all looking this evening? We're going to have to fight a giant dick, aren't we? Everybody, roll initiative for me. Oh, God. Come on, Rover. Curiosity. What's a Rover? Uh, oh, man. This, oh, I God. Hate. This was a big thing from last time. They're, he's, I'm going to fucking kill myself. <laughs> they're basically little Mars Rovers. She's sending Mars them rovers, down below the thing to them, see what's happening below. And then I just said, look like Curiosity killed the cat. Yes. No, that was a good one. Very, it was a good, very, very well set up. You guys should just... So subtle, nobody even noticed. What if you fucked yourself to death? <laughs> <laughs> The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2021. All rights reserved.